What if there was a way to read scripture for your family and friends, even when you're not around? Maybe you're not in the same geographic location as them. Maybe you've passed away. I'm Eric Rasmussen. This is the Concerning Him podcast. And on today's episode, we have on Skylar Sandry, who's an Emmaus alum, who had a great idea for an app, all based on this idea of what if him and his wife passed away? They were worried about the the financial ramifications for his children, but then he started to think about the spiritual impact that he wouldn't be able to have on his children. And, And what if there was a way for him to record scripture and to record his thoughts about scripture so that his children could have those in this doomsday scenario? With this doomsday scenario in mind, Skyler, along with the team, created an app that allows you to share your reading of scripture, to share notes and comments about those scriptures through an app with families and friends and and really anybody who would be interested. This app is called the Rooted Bible app, and you can find it on the Android app store or the iPhone app store. If you listen to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, it'd be great if you gave us a rating or review. And if you watch these episodes on YouTube, we'd really appreciate it if you'd like the video or subscribe to our channel. Remember, the Concerning Him podcast is brought to you by Emmaus Bible College. Here at Emmaus, it's our goal to impact the world for Christ through everything we do, whether it's in the classroom teaching Bible and theology to young men and women, or it's training those same young men and women for their future professional careers, or it's through ministries like Concerning Him. For more information about Emmaus, please visit Emmaus.edu. And if you're interested in listening to more episodes like this one, or reading biblically-centered articles, or listening to sermons that glorify God and teach you all about Scripture, please visit ConcerningHim.com. Welcome, Skylar. Thank you, Eric. Good to be here. I'm happy to have you on. This is awesome. Last podcast released, I had uh, Travis Holton, who we went to school with. Yep, saw him a couple weeks ago. Now I've got you on. This has been a fun little stretch for me of yep. my old classmates, but uh, yeah. welcome. How you doing? Good, man. I can't can't complain about life. It's been it's been a good stretch. Uh, just had our fourth kid in January, and a lot of exciting things happening right now. And yeah, things are good. Good. Well, let's get started by who are you? Yeah, yeah I, I want to hear who you are and kind of your background and. Yep. Before Emmaus, your time at Emmaus, what's been going on since Emmaus? Yeah, still figuring all that out. Um, uh, but no, it's it's been good. So I uh, was born and raised in the Quad Cities. Uh, uh, jumped around schools growing up there and then uh, went to Judson University my freshman year in Elgin, Illinois. Uh, ended up becoming a believer literally two weeks before the end of the school year. Um, decided it'd be good to go somewhere where I could get... Uh, at least a little bit uh, grounded and rooted in my faith. And so stumbled upon Emmaus Bible College. Uh, My plan was to come here for a year, uh, get the one-year Bible certificate, not play basketball. (laughs) Uh, Played basketball at Judson. My plan was to just take a year off, um, get healthy, had some some physical injuries going on, uh, learn more about God and move on was my plan. And I think within 12 hours of being on campus, I met my now- wife and a mother of my four children so that was uh that made me decide to play basketball that year and ultimately stay for the rest of the three years so got a business administration degree here had a great time uh it's a little weird coming back if I'm being honest because like the teachers you know like I was here with the with Glock and I was here you know all all the all the the OGs the legends um I know there's still a couple of them still around um Business, the business department, I think I went through like three or four different professors in my three years here. And You had Dr. Harrington, right? I had Dr. Harrington, oh, who was man. like the best. I yeah. uh, had a couple not so good experiences. I mean, President Boom stepped in. Oh, yeah. For, uh, for like half a semester and, and taught some classes. So we had a, that was right when the business program was getting started up. So, yeah. or it was a few years old. It wasn't that old. So uh, now it's in a, in a really good spot, but had a great, great education here. Um uh, ultimately, after college, decided to, uh, my wife and I decided to move to Arizona, where I started my career in uh, financial advising, wealth management, is what I call it now. Uh, at the time, it was just corporate level financial advisor at a place called Merrill Edge. Uh, we spent two and a half years down in Arizona, coached basketball down there, pretty high level basketball while I was in Arizona. Got connected at a at a church down there. Um, 
had our first kid down there, then moved from Arizona back to Iowa to join my dad's team in wealth management at Merrill Lynch at the time. Uh, that would have been 2018, uh, which uh, was a crazy year. Then we had second kid and was getting really in, involved in my dad's business. Um, merged our, you know, what, what business I had had and then what he had, which I, I didn't have much at the time. And then um, spent the next, you know, so that's been almost six years ago. Really the last six years has just been uh, focusing on deepening and developing those relationships that my dad had and then deepening, developing relationships that, that I've brought on uh, and, and building out our team where we've gone from, there's really f- three of them uh, when I joined and then now we're up to 13 people on our team okay. uh, in the wealth management space and uh, serve serve a few hundred families and that's what we do is just wealth management. So yeah, up to four kids now and been in Iowa ever since down in the Quad Cities. What do you mean when you talk about wealth management? What do you, what are you doing exactly? Um, it's broad. Okay. Uh, uh, it's broad. Uh, anything. So, um, ultimately the end goal, our mission statement is we want to help people accomplish financial peace of mind. So, um, that involves pretty much anything financial. So we're going to sit down with somebody, uh, build a financial plan, talk about, okay, where, where do you stand today? Where do you want to be when you retire? And then where do you want to be when you pass away? Like, you know, inheritance wise for your kids. So we help people with banking. We help people with auto loans. We help people with life insurance. We help people with mortgages. We help people uh, with all sorts of things, financial executive services, 401k plans, uh, just financial planning in general. The biggest thing that we do that's that's the core of our business is, is investing in portfolio management. So we manage a portfolio based on their needs, their goals, their desires, and, and it's just goals. We call it goals-based wealth management. So figure out what they're going to need, how are we going to fund it, what kind of portfolio we're going to put them in. And then we do a whole bunch with individual stocks. I don't, I'm not a, uh, we use mutual funds in some occasions, but for the most part on the stock side, we're buying individual stocks um, and building a portfolio that makes sense. So uh, literally, I mean, our goal is to be the family office for families. So if they have a need and we want to work with grandma and grandpa, the kids and the grandkids, we want to work with every generation um, and uh, ultimately anything financial that they need, uh, we want to help them figure out a plan. So, yeah. How does, you, you talk about, you know, go to Judson for a year, you get yep. saved, you come to Emmaus, you study business here, you study the Bible here. Yeah. And, you know, I think there might be some people that might say, in that financial planning, that's too focused on money. It's too focused on, on earthly wealth and materials and not, you know, not focused on, on heavenly things. Yeah. How do you see your faith, your understanding of scripture and doctrine integrating really every day with what you're doing? <laughs> Well, going back to Dr. Harrington. Yeah. Uh, Great man. Yep. Um, and just uh, SLT back in the day, you know, oh, yeah. st- uh, uh, servant leadership training. Um, and, and we had a class called, uh, called servant leadership through Dr. Harrington, which was a business class. Um, and so the whole concept is, okay, how do we, how do we you know, uh, uh, lead by serving people? Um, and, and there's the goal here with wealth management is we want them to see and experience something different than what they're going to get in the typical secular wealth management culture. Um, so you see all the crazy movies, you know, uh, not going to name drop any of them, but there's some crazy movies out there, you know, that would lead you to believe this crazy secular drugs, alcohol ridden business where people are just partying all the time and doing nothing good, uh, where we want, we want to, to glorify and honor God through, through our, through our financial practices. I mean, money's one of, I think, if not the most, one of the most talked about topics in the Bible. Um, and so we want people to, to steward it well and manage it well. And ultimately that's our, our job is to help people do that. So it's led to some really good conversations. Um, for me, like the biggest thing where I'm at, you know, during the scary times, during the, Hey, we've got this politician in office. We've got this economic fear. We've got this inflation. We got these interest rates. We've got this war. We've got, you name it, you know, all sorts of different turmoil. You got COVID, you know, the whole pandemic thing. That was six weeks of the most panic I've ever seen, you know, and people are, people are freaking out because they, they don't have, uh, <clears throat> they, they, they don't have, um, uh, a whole lot of, a whole lot of focus on, on, on godly things. And so it's not, you know, it's not with every relationship. I'm not going to come in and, and, and throw, throw a Bible at them and say, get your stuff together, you know, but through, through my, conversations just naturally 
you know, we're able to able to have, have good conversations about, you know, how we're not freaking out because ultimately none of it really matters at the end of the day. We're just called to be good stewards of it while we have it on earth. Um, so yeah, I don't that answers your question or not. Yeah, that does. And I think that's, that's actually kind of connected <coughs> with the main reason I want to talk to you. Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm on Facebook a week and a half ago, something like that. Mm-hmm. And I see this announcement. I called you up right away and there's this app and yeah. I'm right away. I'm like, Skylar, tell me about this app. Um, so tell me about, mm-hmm. tell me about this app that you kind of created. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, it's, it's, it, it ties into wealth management okay. uh, to a degree with how I came up, why I came up with the idea. Um, cause every day, again, I'm working with my clients about all right, financial peace of mind. So part of that is, all right, we're going to go build an estate plan. We're going to, we're going to put together a will trust, whatever we got to do, uh, given a certain individual situation. So I'm doing that constantly with clients left and right. And then we always had wills and, and different things and trusts and whatever set up for our family. But we, we were, uh, had just had our third kid and I was like, all right, we need to sit down and do a little bit deeper diving planning, make sure everything's in place in, in Becca and I's personal situation. Didn't want to leave anything unturned. I was, I was starting to feel a little unsteady about everything. So I was like, all right, we're going to nail this. Um, part of that conversation when you're sitting out with the attorney, the estate plan attorney is, all right, let's talk about doomsday situation. Let's talk about mom and dad dying at the same time. Let's talk about dad dying. Let's talk, okay, do you have enough insurance? Like, do you want your kids to get your full net worth when they turn 18 years old? Or should we wait till they're 25? And then should you put parameters on that? And is everything set up how you want it uh, if you were to die tomorrow? And so Rebecca, um, you know, she she didn't want to talk about it. Mm. She didn't want to think about it. Like it's an emotional experience, right? Like you're talking about like your kids being raised by somebody else without mom and dad. Um, And, you know, mama bear doesn't want to think about that. And I'm like, well, I deal with this weekly with clients talking about, okay, if you do die, who do you want to take care of your kids? If you do die, what age do you want your kids to get the money? If you do die, what parameters do you want to put on the money for your kids? You know, uh, there's all sorts of things and you see all sorts of different situations. Um, And so Becca was really struggling with it. Um, I was, it's not like I was happy about it, but I, you know, I was, so I I was struggling with it, but um, we had the conversation, went through the whole process, um, got to the end of it. You know, it's a six, eight week process by the time you work through everything and get everything implemented and documents signed and, and, and any policies, any additional policies you need to get put into place, which I don't do a whole lot of life insurance, but you know, you need it. It's a, it's a, it's a necessary part of the financial plan. Um, and so we get to the end of that and where I, where it was weighing heavy on me and Rebecca probably wasn't weighing as heavy on anymore at this point was like, okay, like going through that scenario and, and, and all of that, I, I was left with, that's all great. But like my spiritual, like daily impact is, is mostly gone. Mm. Right. Like there's, there's the whole, all right, they, they can have my Bible or my journal, you know, whatever they can, they can see some highlights or, you know, whatever they can hear stories from family and friends about different things I did to impact them. They can see the videos, the family videos and the way I interact with, you know, there's certain things to a degree that, that, that you can do to still have a spiritual impact. Um, yet it just didn't feel, it just, it still was like, well, it just sucks. Like, it's just, I just, I don't, I don't like that. So that was probably a four to eight week process um, where I was just struggling through that, praying through that. Um, And we went on a, on a fast forward a little bit and then I'll go backwards. We, we, we left Merrill Lynch in uh, October of 2022 and went to RBC U S wealth management, uh, big business shift and, and change. And so we were leading up to that. So have that whole weight on, you know, on, on my shoulders at the time. And so I was like, all right, let's go on vacation. Let's go to Hawaii. Let's not think about anything. Let's just, let's just go rest before the storm because the, the whole transition is a several, several month process. And, and there's a lot of rules in place. I can't tell anybody beforehand. I can't mm. give a client a heads up. Hey, I'm going to call you in a month. Like I can't do that. Yeah. Um, and so, so a lot of stress involved. Um, so I was like, all right, we're going to go relax, chill, whatever. So we go to Hawaii, do that, come back. And we landed in Des Moines at like 1 a.m. Uh, on our way back. And I was driving uh, from Des Moines back to the Quad Cities. And my whole family is in the 
back of the car, knocked out, totally zonked, sleeping. And I'm driving by myself, and I was listening to a Defense of Calvinism uh, <laughs> audiobook. <laughs> um, you'd appreciate that one. Um, and uh, and it like I was like, oh, audiobook, this is cool. Like, and uh, somehow I just had the idea of like, all right, man, like record yourself reading the Bible, mm. like audibly like like i was like okay i can go do that like just like you know there's a record function on on iphone or voice memos or whatever you can go record something and title it and save it and it's saved on the icloud and so i was like you can do that like just go start genesis 1 and read as far as you can and then save it you know like genesis 1 through 3 verses 8 you know whatever yeah. and just save it file by file and just go about that and that was pretty early on in the drive, and I, like, loved the idea. Now my mind's just racing, and I'm, like, by the end of the drive, I was, like, you got to make an app, dude. <laughs> like, because if you can do this in a really organized, easy, tech-savvy way where where it enables you to record it, you know, we can get a social media platform going with it. You can listen to other people's, because, like, the problem, the, you have to, like, go physically share every file, yeah. you know, with Apple if you go that route. And so I was like, like, if you can make this social media platform almost where it's like, hey, if I follow you, I can just go if you, you it's either private or public profile, I can go in there and listen to to your reading. Um, and then uh, and and so so was just mine was just racing with all sorts of ideas. It, it turned into very quickly. I So I had that idea. I was like, like verbally putting notes in my phone of like all the ideas I was having. This is at this point, it's like 3 a.m. and I'm hyped up on some sort of energy drink, you know, staying awake. About trying. about about to start this massive work transition. About to start this massive work but transition. But this is where your mind's at. This is, is where my mind's yeah. at. Yeah. With, with, with uh, all right, like we need to get this app going. And that would have been August something, uh, late August. And the transition was six weeks away. And I was like, I, I, don't, I don't have the capacity uh, or the right personnel or, the, or, or anything to get going on this. So I was like, all right, like we're going to have to push pause. So I brought a very, very small group of people, like three people in on this. And I was like, hey, here's my idea. I just want to start brainstorming with you guys on like what this should become. The first person I told Nacho is my wife. Like like we literally got home. She woke up. We bring the kids inside. She stands like, hey, I've got this idea. And she like, you know, Nacho is like, yes, like let's do that. Let's, let's like leave a legacy to the kids where, you know, cause you don't know when you're going to die. That's the thing about life. Um, and, and so, you know, I'm, I'm only 30 years old and yet, you know, I want to be prepared for that. I don't, I don't want to be unwise. Um, and so part of that was like, all right, we need to get going. Um, and we were really, really excited about it. Um, so, but we were like, all right, let's develop the idea. Let's focus on the business transition. And then when, when we get around that corner, we'll, we'll, get it going somehow. We didn't know how literally we had, I had no, I'm not an IT guy. I don't <laughs> understand how an app or code or anything works. I didn't know what it was going to look like, what it was going to feel like. I didn't know the name. I didn't know anything. It was just like, but here's this idea. Let's give the world a way to, to audibly record themselves uh, reading the Bible and then make it really easy to go and listen to it for, for anybody that they want to allow to listen to it. Um, so anyway, so so really took the next, I mean, it was all I could talk about for the next like three or four weeks at that point with that small group of guys like, hey, what about this? What about this? And like, then they start throwing ideas and we, you know, we turn it into what it is now and we've got, you know, what it is today. Like if you go download it today versus what it's going to be is very different. Oh, really? Because um, we've got a lot of different features we want to add. Um, so we were like, all right, like, so I, I learned all sorts of uh, <coughs> fancy things terms <laughs> one of the terms was mvp was what i kept hearing about you got to have the mvp version which is the the minimal viable product is what it stands not for. most valuable player not most valuable player that's what i thought literally. Yeah. i was like i was like this yeah it is the mvp app but <laughs> <coughs> so i was like mvp all right cool so we have to build out all right like to get it to a place where we can launch it we need to have this 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 and this and so for me i was like we need to have Obviously, the core is the core is audibly recording yourself read the Bible. But for example, something upcoming is like we want to be able to 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 video record, you know, mm -hmm. while you while you audibly record and like actually leave videos. Um, so that that's coming. So you know, and then and then secondly, we were like, okay, big thing for me is I wanted to be able to leave uh, audio notes. Okay, so I was going to ask about that. Yep. Yeah, 
Yep. So so right now we have that function. It's not necessarily the, the, the cleanest function on the app, but I was like, hey, it needs to be there from day one. We'll make it look prettier and act better as time goes on. So right now it's like before or after a verse or a chapter, whatever you're going to do, you can actually go and like swipe and, and record a note. And it'll, okay. it'll tell you where those notes are throughout the Bible. So like if I read scripture and my oldest son's name is Tatum and I, I'm, you know, thinking about him or it applies to something going on in his life, I can go and actually record, hey, Tatum, I just like, here's what's going on. Here's how I'm praying for you. Here's what this scripture meant to me in this moment. Love you, kid. You know, and like, and then someday what, what we'll have, and that's not there yet, is the ability to have files, you know, with, with like Tatum's name. So then I could actually go save that note and link it to Tatum. And so then like someday he'll be able to go and just like click on his name and mm -hmm. boom, mm -hmm. there's every note that ever applied to him. Um, so that's, so that's coming. Um, social media platform. I was like, all right, like there needs to be a way to like share this or access it. That's easy. So naturally it's like, okay, we can make this a public and private profile where everyone's in there. You can go, I can go request to follow you. But if you're private profile, that means I, you know, you can say no or yes. Okay. Um, so if you want to be private, that's great. If you want to just be a family, that's great. Um, if you don't care, like my problem, because I started the app, I, I felt like I should have my profile public, which I don't really care. I don't think anybody really wants to listen to me read the Bible except for my kids and, and my wife. Um, and, you know, I travel a lot for work. And so where I got really excited was like, all right, like I could wake up in the morning and actually record scripture and be like, hey, Becca, I just, record, you know, mm -hmm. just recorded this. And she could go sit at the breakfast table and play that scripture or at the dinner table and play that scripture. And I'm not necessarily there. So just all sorts of cool things. Um, so I wanted to be like a social media profile where it's like, all right, like you can follow people if you want to. And someday, you know, there's, there's some people, um, might not ever record, but they'll listen. And so like pastors, preachers, s more well-known people, uh, who have, uh, uh, nice voices, you know, could record and people could listen to them. Um, so anyways, so just trying to make it a really easy platform. Um, cost wise, we're trying, we're trying to keep it, uh, as cheap as possible. It costs nothing to be a listener. There's, okay. there's a small cost to, to be a, a content creator. Cause there is obviously we've got salaries, you know, with developers and, and, and the main guy who you'll probably hear from later, uh, who's, who's kind of been my chief operating officer, Bryce, you know, we've got different people, you know, that, that are working on it. And then there's technology within the app that costs money where it's like voice recognition technology. So like you can actually, uh, go verse by verse. Like if I want to start mid chapter, I could click on a verse and actually start on that verse rather than like, you know, the clunky going back to Apple idea. There's no way to like jump around yeah. with that original idea. I can't say, Oh, I want to go to Proverbs 13 verse three and like click on that and start where with our app, uh, we can. So like yeah. you can actually go to a specific verse and play there. Um, uh, so there's, so there's a lot of technology, uh, involved with that. Um, so yeah, so so we've got and there's I'll keep something secret, uh, uh, and we'll let them roll out in time. Bryce is back there going, whoo! <laughs> <He's like, laughs> Don't promise too many things. <laughs> no, well, the things I've promised so far uh, are are our next kind of steps okay. naturally. So um, we, you know, and and then and then we just to give a little more context or detail is like this goes back to kind of day one, and this I'll share a little bit of the story that I was telling you before this is. Bryce and I's timing on all this was like definitely ordained by God. Mm -hmm. I mean, like just the timing of when I was coming out of my transition where I was literally probably working 80, 90 hour weeks for, for four or five months, uh, um, where I couldn't get my head above water, you know, uh, for a few months there, it was, it was tough. Um, he ended up leaving a job, uh, basically at the same time where I was like, okay, I can like come up for air. Mm. Um, and we already knew each other. We were already talking about a couple of the business ventures where I was like, Hey buddy, like, could you help with this, this and this? He's like, yeah, I can help, you know, kind of more like a, uh, a few hours a week type of a thing. And I was like, Hey, I'm ready to dive head first. And it was actually funny. We like, you know, the Michael Scott in the office back in the day when he has a mullet and he like has a picture hand handshake. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, we took a picture like that where, uh, 
uh, at a Mexican restaurant in the Quad Cities where we like made our deal where he was going to be full time uh, developing, help develop this app and figure it out. And so the timing was perfect. And he's the perfect guy. He understands tech. He understands the whole process and, and he's, you know, a kingdom focused guy. And so, um, and again, another reason I'm excited about it's like, what better way, you know, we got all these issues in the world. We got issues in churches. We got issues just in our country, government, politics, uh, all sorts of conflict. It's like, what better way to help solve some of that than more people reading the Bible? Amen. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just keep it simple. Like I love podcasts, love listening to podcasts, but there's nothing better than God's word than to like get somebody more rooted in, in their faith. And so I, uh, so I just got excited and I, I, I basically was like, I don't care what this takes. We just need to make it happen. And, and we needed God to open some doors for sure um, to make it all happen. And so Bryce was kind of like that first door, you know, where it's like, all right, I can, I have somebody who can devote, you know, 40, 50 hours a week to this app where they're going to go run with it. Like, Hey, here's the idea. Here's like all these thoughts, these ideas. All right, go <laughs> get it done, which is a big tall order. So he turns around and, uh, first things getting organized with our, with our thoughts and our ideas. And then he turns around and okay, now we got to go find developers. And so again, crazy, crazy godsend. Like we're looking at hiring, uh, corporate app development companies and, out of like Chicago or, you know, we, we, we interviewed some people in third world countries. We were doing all sorts of things and it was going to cost, ultimately it would have cost triple or quadruple what we ended up spending. And one of the companies we were within a week of signing a contract with this company out of Chicago. And one of the developers was, was a, was a Christian. He's like, Hey, I love you guys' idea. I want to see this succeed. Selfishly. We want to develop this app. Like we, we want to be here for it. And I forget all the reasons, but a couple that I remember were, hey, you're going to need continuous uh, development on this. And ideally, you guys, like, your app isn't like a build it, set it, forget it. This is like, hey, this is going to be ideally around for a long time. You want to make it better. You want to make it cleaner. You want to have the ability to do this. And, like, you want to have the same developers on it long term. He's like, so we'd get it done faster. Like, we could get this done in six weeks for you, but it's going to be triple or quadruple the cost. He's like... You should go to this website. It's called um, Upwork. <laughs> That's why I bring him places. <laughs> he knows things. <clears throat> um, called Upwork. And he posts a job posting of like, hey, we're looking to develop a Bible app. And next thing you know, we've got, uh, we've got, I don't know, something stupid, like 70 applications within. So now his job is like literally interviewing all these people, okay. talking about, all right, who's the right fit. And the goal is just hire one guy. Or, or girl, like one, you know, just get one person to get going on this from a budgetary standpoint was the original goal. And then ultimately we found the two perfect guys. Okay. Um, and so we were like, all right, because there's different sides of app development. So, and one was perfect for that side, one was perfect for that side. And uh, <laughs> um, it's UI and UX is what it's called. Yeah, you, you user interface, interface and user experience. Okay. Yeah, look at me, knowing things. <laughs> You're so smart. So smart. <laughs> <laughs> I almost didn't get it right. Um, and so one's focused on UI, one's focused on UX. And so I found the two perfect guys who are passionate about the project, um, and we made it work. Uh, God opened doors financially and, and some investors and the whole bit to get it up and running. And and uh, so that, that was back in, that would have been August probably of this past year, 23, by the time we found them uh, and got them going. And then here we are in March, and, and we were using this uh, platform called Test Flight, and we had a few handful of beta testers who were using it and coming back with, hey, here's this glitch, here's this issue, here's this thing. Um, and uh, the developers go and fix it and change it and do what they had to do. And then it got to a point where uh, it's, to me, it's like I, I don't want it to be, it's, not, it's never going to be 100% perfect. There's, there's going to be things that happen uh, I've got high expectations. Same thing with my business on the wealth management side. It's like, uh, my expectations are high. Um, I always want the best thing for people and best thing for me and the best product I can produce, you know, is what I, is what I want to do. And so it was hard for me, but I was like, Hey, it's, it's ready, you know, to, to go out there and it's usable. Um, and, and it's only going to get better. And so got to the point where we, uh, 
we we got it approved by Apple, and now it's on the App Store. Um, and the name of it is Rooted Rooted Bible App. I was going to ask you to dive <laughs> yeah. into that name. Yeah. So uh, shout out John Walker. Okay. Um, there you go, John. Shout out John Walker. Another, was, another Emmaus was, alum. Another Emmaus alum. He was one of the two guys, really, that I brought in early. Okay. Um, and one thing we were praying through consistently, and this was right, I think right around the time where Bryce came into the mix. Um, we were like, all right, we got to figure out a name, you know, and like that we can start using. And uh, it was maybe a few days later, and we would meet, uh, usually it was like Wednesday morning at 6 a.m. for a couple hours to go through things and, um, John, and we always start with prayer and John, John starts praying and, and he used the word rooted talking about, we want people to be, you know, rooted in their faith and, you know, rooted in the reading scripture. And, and he's kept, kept saying rooted. And like, he says, amen. And then like, we all look at each other. We're like rooted. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we stuck with it. Um, and, uh, uh, and then slogans kind of became, uh, advance the kingdom, preserve the legacy. It was kind of, the the punchline slogan that we went with because originally it was like for me going back to the beginning was like all right i want to preserve my legacy like i i want to leave a spiritual inheritance you know to my kids or and my wife like if i were to 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 pass away young or old whatever you know before my wife um and so i was like all right like that was my main purpose and then as time went on it pretty quickly it was like all right, this could be a pretty good evangelical tool and just a sanctification tool uh, for for believers to get in the word. It gives you, you know, it should be enough, if we're being honest, it should be enough that like, hey, God saved you, go read the Bible. It's not for a lot of people and people kind of stay, you know, can stay in that, that, that stage of never really getting deep into the word. And so it gives them another reason to, where it's like, hey, I want to leave this legacy to my kids. You know, you hear about, moms, dads, grandparents, saving voicemails from loved ones who have passed away. It's like, I'm never going to delete. And I do the same thing. I've got, I literally have the first voicemail that Becca ever left me mm -hmm. on my voicemail still. And I've got, and she doesn't leave me voicemails anymore. Uh, but like my voicemails, I have like probably 30 red messages in there and 29 of them are Becca. Cause I'm just not getting rid of them. Cause I love hearing your voice. I love hearing your message. Love hearing you say, I love you. Like, and so that was, the main focus um, at first. And then it became a thing where we are focusing on uh, really three things is what we were focused on. We were like, all right, like the family uh, churches and schools okay. were, was, were our three at first. And now, now the app is focused on family, but has enough functionality where a church or a school can use it as a tool. So, you know, like one of my first examples of these guys were like, Hey, from a from a non legacy perspective, from a non hey I want to leave time for my kids perspective, I was like, I went to Mace Bible College. Guess what? You have to do your freshman year. You have mm -hmm. to read the Bible cover to cover. And uh, you know, Mace, like I, I don't want it to be like a, a a ruler where you slap people with it, but like, and you don't. I wouldn't expect them to because recording audibly takes a lot more time than than reading in your mind or yep. even listening audibly. And so it might not be, hey, you have to record the whole Bible. It's like, hey, certain chapters, we're going to have you re record mm -hmm. using this tool and verify that you're doing it. And, and, and there's some accountability there from a teacher's perspective. Um, you talk about John Walker's school, you know, down in Kansas. It's like, all right, like once kids learn how to read, whatever. I don't even know what grade that is, first, second, third grade, first grade, whatever. Um, they, uh, you can start recording the Bible like in a pre-K through 12 school. It's like, all right, start the project when they're learning to read. And then by the time they graduate from the school, they're going to have the Bible fully recorded. Mm -hmm. And like for me as a parent, if I have my, you know, my daughter, my, my third kid, my daughter starting at age six or seven, recording herself read the Bible until she's 18. And I have that recording for the rest of my life. I kind of like that. Yeah. I, li I like the sound of that. Um, so, so we were looking at it from schools and churches just naturally. It's just like, Hey, as a church, we're going to, you know, like, Hey, we're going through Romans right now. Let's record, you know, like, like we're going to be in Romans one through three next week, go record Romans one through three. And really more importantly for me, it's like, I mean, our, our, uh, first rule about fight clubs, don't talk about fight club, but our church, we call it fight clubs. So I've got two guys, two other guys in my fight club. And so like, we're talking about using it from like, a 
hey, let's all get in the word together. Let's make sure we're like let, from Bible study, like, hey, go read John. But then this is holding each other accountable to leaving behind that mm. spiritual legacy to your kids. Um, so a lot of focuses. Um, uh, pricing's kind of all over the map. We, we make it cheaper by the head. So like if a family, like if a dad wants to have his wife and the kids record, it's like it gets cheaper by the head. Um, and then we've got, we actually just, I heard today, figured out our whole discount code thing. So, so uh, we're hoping to get some of those out there because this truly is not a money grab for me. Um, uh, it'd be nice to recoup, you know, what I, what I invested in it. Um, and even the investors that gave money towards it, like they don't even really necessarily expect a return of principal at any point, but it'd be nice to have enough revenue just to, just to keep it running and making yeah. it better. That's really the goal behind, you know, why we're charging is, is there's a cost to record naturally, but then also the salaries of developers and guys who are hopefully taking it to next levels where, where it's better and better. One of the things I like about this. So my, my, uh, my wife's grandmother, who's the great grandmother of my two year old yeah. has been reading, uh, children's storybooks yep. out loud, recording them on her phone, text me the, the MP3. Yep ships the book down so that my two-year-old can sit there and have an audio book of her great grandmother reading. This is that same idea, but with scripture and simplifying the process where I could say to her, I could say, Hey, you want to do the same thing for my two-year-old, but with, you know, she lives up in Minnesota. So there's this, this familial aspect of kind of bringing people together through scripture that over a big distance, it's one thing, you know, thinking about, you and your family and I can record and be on the road. And then there's this other aspect of people with family members all over the world, people they love all over the world and yep. being able to, to kind of bond through this digital yep. medium over scripture. I think that's wonderful. I think that's awesome. Yeah. And that's, and I've seen that already in, in my life. So first of all, my boys, they're four and five, about to be six. Um, every night they want me to record the Bible like mm. we lay down cuddle and like, you know, I'm, I'm there holding the phone and I record. Usually we do uh, right now we're going through Proverbs and then we usually do uh, one of the gospels um, or a chapter. Um, but then the next thing is listen to Nana. So, so mm. Ellen Becca's mom, Ellen Volgarino, she's going through Psalms and Proverbs and started Isaiah and, and every night. So like literally when you record something, click save somebody across the world can go listen to it immediately. It's, it's, wow. it's there. So, um, so if, if Ellen goes records that night, you know, a Psalms, well, okay, cool. We can go and, and listen to that. And our kids have loved it. Like absolutely loved it. Like they feel closer to their, to their grandparents. I feel closer, you know, it's just, it's just a different level of, of connection, you know, spiritually than, than I've experienced as far as like from a digital standpoint. Um, so, so yeah, it's it's been a real impact on my family already with with as far as being connected to grandparents and great grandparents someday. And and one of my buddies who posts on Facebook about it, the post you saw, yeah, you know, you want to leave back in the day. You know, if you look at the Bible and they're they're going through genealogy, and it's like they can name how many generations are on there. You know, it's like forever, right? Where today, like, can you go name your great great grandparent? No. Yeah. Like, I, I couldn't even tell you my great-grandparents' first names, if I'm being honest. I got my grandparents nailed because they were alive when I was alive. Um, I can't go deeper than that. And so this is we're talking decades, you know, like away from this uh, where it's a real thing. But it's like, hey, from a generational standpoint, you know, to get your family connected on, hey, my great-great-great-great-great-grandkids, if, if Jesus hasn't come back yet, um, are going to be able to hear me read the Bible and stay connected that way. And there's going to be a family tree function within the app where you connect the accounts. Um, uh, it's going to be a real thing, mm. you know, where, where that, that was a biblical thing. Genealogy was a big deal, you know, back in the day. And we've kind of gone away from that as definitely a country, maybe not as a world. There's, there's other countries who might not have as, as much as, as, as us here in the U S but um, getting back to that, you know, where it's like, there is a genealogy where you can go and track and you know who uh, who your great, great, great grandparents were, you know, through them reading the Bible mm-hmm. and leaving notes. And you can go listen to, hey, I was struggling financially and these verses here 
helped me with that and being able to topically save things to those files. Like you can do it by name or topic. So it's like financials, you know, it's like you put in there, I was strong with this or, you know, uh, you can be as transparent as you want. It's your own yep. Bible, you know, with, with, with your struggles. So there's a lot of layers to this that, that at its core, you just want to do it for your kids. Yeah. You know, that, that was where the idea came from for me. But as we've developed it and thought through it and talked through it, it's like, man, this is a tool that can be used for so many different things. Mm. Um, which is what makes us ultra excited. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming on, Scott. It's been great. It's a pleasure. I, I really appreciated it. Yeah. Well, now we have Bryce, the the man who was previously behind the camera, now in front of the camera. Mm-hmm. Thanks for coming on. Absolutely. Uh, this is great. It's been nice to meet you today. It's my first chance getting to know you. Is this your first time on campus here at Emmaus? Yes. And okay. when I walked into the doors, I saw a man sitting on a bench uh, looking like he was waiting for someone. And I was like, that's got to be our guy. <laughs> that was just <laughs> ultimate hospitality. So big kudos to you oh, on that. Thank you. I, I, I noticed it. that and appreciated it. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's well, great. I had to do something. The campus is pretty empty. It's spring break right now, yeah. so there's not a lot of people. I had to make sure you guys saw somebody at least when you showed up. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> um, tell me a bit about getting to know Skylar. You guys are kind of related, if that's correct. A little bit. A little bit. Yeah, we're probably going on year seven now since I first heard of Skylar. Because when I first was introduced to the Sandry family, he was uh, still in Arizona. Okay. So... Uh, I heard a lot about him, but I didn't get to personally meet him till he was up here. And honestly, I think the first time I met you was probably at the golf club, probably at Crow Valley. I worked at the golf club that his family was members at. So I actually, when my wife and it's, I... It's a good way to spend a lot of time with Skylar. It is, at a golf course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll make you feel very small. Um, so I first, like when my wife and I moved to the Quad Cities to go play college baseball and start to figure out what we want to do just as a family and professionally. We wanted to start having kids. We're, we're just trying to figure all this stuff out. We've been married almost two years. So we come to the Quad Cities and Skylar's parents opened up their house. They were empty nesters. They opened their house to us and we lived with them for two years. Okay. And their whole thing was, hey, don't don't spend any more money than you have to while you're in college. We've known you guys. I, I was... Um, our connection to their family is a little bit um, intricate where my wife um, has a younger sister who started dating the Sandry's son, so okay. Skyler's younger brother. So our families had kind of all woven together through this family that both me and Andrew have now married into. So we'd known them. They welcomed us in. We, we lived with them for two years. So I indirectly knew Skyler for quite a while. Okay. But then... Um, I, my first interaction with him was actually house sitting their house. <laughs> I, I had never even met the guy and we're staying at their house. So I'm like, you know, creeping on the family pictures and like, yeah, I don't, I know nothing about this dude. There's a, there's a safe down here. So he's interesting. You know, he's probably got something cool in there. Uh, and then really we didn't start becoming any sort of closeness really until this, honestly, we would we'd see each other at you know Sandry family functions because mm. my wife and I have always been really welcomed into those, but this was a pretty big. We just yeah, it, there was a kind of a natural gravitation that neither of us really planned. I don't think it just started happening, and then um, he started to see me being involved in some different things he was doing and asking about it. And I'm a yes man, so <laughs> he got a lot of yeses. Well, tell me about your involvement in the development of this app. What the, What's that been like? And then maybe if you need to clarify or correct anything, he might have said. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So uh, I did a couple of years of application developing in college. That was okay. my major. And uh, I don't do any coding today anymore, but I understand systems. I've been a videographer, video editor, producer, tech director at a church. I've, I've been involved with tech a whole lot. Okay. So when he had this idea, he just asked me, like, is this something you could build? What do you know about it? What do you know? And I said, well, honestly, one of the things I prize myself most about vocationally is I can figure just about anything mm. out. I'm a, I'm a grad student of YouTube university. Like it's, <laughs> I will figure it out. So, you know, and I'm, I'm staring him dead in the eyes and I'm like, Hey, if you trust me, I'll figure it out, mm. you know? And 
So you're kind of taking a chance a little bit, I guess, but I feel like I've proven it and I feel like I've, I've been doing tons of random stuff for people all over the Quad Cities for a while. So he pitches the idea. I loved it. Um, got really excited about it pretty quick. I've got my own three-year-old and one-year-old and another on the way. And, you know, I'm I'm one of 11 kids in my family. And okay. I, you know, my family cares a lot about genealogy and all this. So family is a big deal to me as well. So as he's hearing it, I'm like totally latching onto the vision. And immediately like that, that we had him over for dinner. He and Becca come over. Our kids are playing together and we're just talking at the counter. He's sharing the idea. And I was getting so excited about it that like that night I'm, you know, Google how, how to build an app. How to, like, and I'm just, how does this work? And, oh, you have to write in a certain language. And if you want to release on App Store, I, iPhone and Android, you have to write in different languages. And, oh, so do we need, and, and I just start going down the rabbit hole of trying to figure it out. Um, and then, like you said, I quit my job at the church um, and <laughs> just started, I, I was like diving into this pretty fully, but ready to do something else. And then we start talking. We have that lunch um, where he finally comes in. He's like, hey, I think we want to do this. Let's mm -hmm. let's start figuring out some terms. And I was so bought in by then that I feel like I was already running with it. And so those meetings were great where we just got to make sure we're on the same page. We're starting to clarify. We dreamed super big. We, we went huge with those meetings and then quickly realized after I started talking to people in Poland and San Francisco and Chicago and realized we had to bring it way down. So it's a good thing we had those couple months where it was just completely unhinged, <laughs> just <laughs> dreaming. Where, it's going to do this. It's going to do this. And then my job was to then try to boil it down to the, the absolute core and then pitch those back in those meetings with Skylar and John and Kyle and um, and so I was, I was not the founder of it. I didn't have a, I wouldn't even say I've had a ton of original ideas or something, but I've been the one who's been able to put the full-time workload into it and, and really dream about what it could be fully like this has my yeah. attention. So, um, yeah. And then I was pretty much trusted to run with it and we've had some pretty great interactions since that of, um, what does this look like? You know, there's going to be times, Skyler, where we need to make a decision. Mm. What do I, what kind of role do I have? What if what if you're out of town? What if you're in, you know, Georgia golfing? What if you're on client? Like, what if we need an answer? Do I have the, the uh, I don't know, do I have the authority to make some calls? And we've, so we've, I think it's grown us just as friends working together like that, where there's just a very, you you go through something like this trust is going to either like build stronger or completely fall apart and it's been really good so can i ask you a more technical question go for it i'll do my best do you know if you guys will have the ability if somebody has already previously recorded sections of scripture mm -hmm. to be able to import that into the app can you currently do that is that something you guys yeah, have talked about it's a dream of ours to do that one of the things that is very technical about what we have to do is we have to use copyright free translation of the bible Okay. We cannot use um, without spending almost half a million dollars. Um, we can't use anything from Zondervan or anything from Crossway. Okay. Um, so we, we went through that process. That was a pretty early on uh, rude awakening, I feel like, for us. And it felt like a big setback of, man, like we can't get these versions that we love, the ones that we all have in our homes. And that. Um, so what are we going to do about this? And it felt like this big, like, oh, this could be the thing that, that – puts the idea to bed and it's just, you know, we can't get past this. And so I remember like immediately I'm starting to stress out and I'm starting to Google stuff and how can it, and then it's like, okay, I need to give this to prayer first. Like this is, this is bad. I'm starting to try to take control of it, shut everything down, spend probably 15 minutes, tell my wife, like, Hey, I'm in, just going to pray. I want, you know, God's got it taken care of. I, I can't imagine this is the thing that like just makes us give up. So spent a bit of time in prayer, went back to it, Googled, and like, you know, in my time was like, are there any copyright free translations? Go on, Google, copyright free translations. First thing that pops up is called the World English Bible. And I start researching. I actually get in touch with the guy who was part of the team that translated it. And their whole mission is to put the Bible in the hands of as many people in as many nations, languages, mm -hmm 
and formats as possible, audiobook, video, um, you know, paperback, whatever. So they are translating into languages that this is what they do. It's a group of 12 people, and they're fully supported by churches as missionaries. So a lot of them work overseas. Um, right now, I believe they're somewhere in Tanzania or something. Okay. You know, and they're working on a, a tribal language, and they're trying to get the Gospels translated. So this guy's emailing me in Africa doing what he's doing, and he goes, and, and I tell him the idea, and he just loves it. He goes, yeah, you, there are, you, know, you don't even have to ask permission. The Bible is free. Mm. Um, to use and so we start comparing it to some of the different translations we love some of the I mean, one of the biggest differences i've found is instead of like lord it says yahweh in the old testament they tra- they, yeah. yep and they translate it his name yahweh um other than that it's pretty comparable to like niv versus esv it's okay. going to be the same thing it's just there's nuances they Maybe their studies of the Greek and Hebrew just turn up a different, well, hey, this was used. I, I know they translate it like this, but it's actually used 17 other times to mean something more similar to this. So they make the same calls that any other translator yeah. would make, where they're just, this is where they feel the Spirit's leading them to to shape it. So I think it's most comparable to like the New American Standard. Okay. So that's what they say, like, hey, if you're looking for who are we most like, that's okay. it. So we've we've sort of looked at that as like that was that felt like the biggest hurdle. How are okay. we going to get our, our people? Is that going to be something that scares people away? Because they're man, I'm an ESV guy, or man, I'm a CSB guy. Sorry, yeah. I can't or KJV even. Um, so one of their biggest concerns um, at the publishers was how are you going to ensure that the reader perfectly reads the Bible. Because if we're going to authorize you to use our version, we're basically saying, hey, entire world, you are now free to record our version. And so that's why, A, it would cost as much as it would. But B, they care a ton about that intellectual property, the work that's been done, and they don't want to submit it where someone who's never read the Bible or never read their version goes on and, oh, I'm going to listen to this reader who reads an ESV. And they start listening, and that reader has a note where they totally botch something hey this is proving that god actually stands for you know yeah and so they're like if we're going to put our name on it how are you ensuring and right now i don't think we have perfect answers for that we do have a uh like skylar talked about there's a vocal recognition um a speech transcriber which is what we're paying the most for every time you submit your audio it runs through a generator that matches your voice to text it'll tell you if you missed any verses it'll tell you if we, we've cut out a few pronunciation things. If you don't know how to, how to say Mephibosheth, it's not going to like <laughs> okay. freak out at you. We've put some words in there and, and pulled back the scale of like, hey, they don't have to get this one perfectly. But um, that's one thing those publishers care a lot about mm. is how do we, how are you protecting the validity of the text and a little bit of it. And I, I went back and forth with them. I'm like, hey, how are you verifying that a pastor from stage is preaching the right yeah. message when he uses your Bible? Like I, and then I, that's I probably I'm being recorded and put, put it out is. there as well, yeah. Right, and there's licenses that churches have to pay to be, but how much, you know, this is just, it's such a, and some of them took it pretty far. They're like, hey, we love this idea. It, we got a couple immediate no's, but then a couple people took it to their review boards. They took it to their intellectual property boards, and they had meetings, and so it was cool to get that relationship built with a few people where they, like, they love what we're doing, but they're like, hey, we also just paid Jonathan Rumi $200,000 to read our version of the Bible to yeah. release on our audio app. We're not really, you know, so so they're like, we believe in what you guys are doing, but the way that, like, they're a business. They're, a, you know, so they got to. You did a good job defending them. I was about ready to start calling them out and say, <laughs> I, I right, was too. Zondervan they, and Crossway dude, locked right in. Away, you I just... was ready to drive to Chicago. <laughs> so I was going to walk right in there. Right in the Crossway. Nashville. And say, I, was, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know where you are. I lived there. Um, but yeah, I've, 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 yeah, since been able to take a step back and sort of see it through okay. what they have to. Okay. It's a lot more political there than I'd like it to be. So, which is part of what I love about the World English Bible guys. They're like, are you kidding me? Yeah, you don't even have to. This is yours. This is the Bible. It's meant to be free. It's meant to be in people's hands. That's great. And so I love that, even though it's a, a version that, you know, I'm sure people are going to see and be like, oh, I don't know. Mm. But I just ask them to trust it. Like, I don't know. It's not meant to replace. No. Bible. No. It's not. 
Yeah. It's a, it's definitely a tool and a supplement and you, we're not asking you to throw away your favorite version <laughs> to do this. Yeah. It's just what we have to do. Yeah. I like dream said, of a day yeah. where, you know, two to five years down the road, uh, there has been success and rooted's taken off and, and, you know, maybe some of those people see it and they, and they want to join and they want to partner with us. Yeah. And I think, uh, we'd be open to that personally. I don't Yeah. Like, we're not going to, no, you missed your chance when we were just a little baby rooted. Like our, our goal is to like, that was one of the things in our first meetings, you know, we, we want people to be able to choose what version they read in. So we we picked like our top six, the most popular six. Let's see if we, and those are all the publishers I emailed yeah. and over oh six, <laughs> um, but someday. So, uh, Apple and Android app stores, mm-hmm. correct? Google Play Store and the the App Store, the iPhone App Store. Yep. Is there a desktop version or a website to go to? You, it's like you were sitting in on our meetings. <laughs> this is these are all things that. Um, so part of the reason we we don't have that yet okay. to answer that question right away, uh, that is a a goal because you have people around the world that have setups like this. Yeah. And I want you to be able thinking. to pull your laptop up, set your audio, you know, get in your acoustically treated room do what you want to do. I, yeah. I mean, I don't even care if someone's got a vision to like have someone playing guitar while they read it like mm-hmm. and like mix their own stuff. It's, it's a, uh, yeah, that's a big a dream, but that's going to be, that's going to be down the road and okay. it's going to be a big release. Yeah. I mean, that's something you, we'd have to hire. Our developers are mobile application developers. They don't build native programs for, you know, operating systems and desktops. Yeah. And so it would definitely have to be after, Revenue is seen. We're a functioning business. There's success, you know, financially. Okay. And then I could see that being something we, we definitely do down the road. But that'd be pretty cool. That's yeah, that's not, that's yeah. what I was asking as I was thinking about, you know, it's one thing just to pull out your iPhone and hit yes. record with the microphone that's on the iPhone. But, but it'd be another thing to be able to plug in. a $400 SM7B right Ex- here. Exactly. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> well, thank you very much for coming Absolutely. on. This is great. Great to get to know you. And uh, you too, right? we're excited about this app. It's awesome. I am too. So very good. It has not worn off on me. I still love what we're doing. So rooted, look up rooted in, in the, the Google play yep. store. Rooted Bible app is rooted the Bible full, app. Yep, okay. someone had already taken rooted for okay. some <laughs> wellness, something. So yeah, rooted Bible app. Okay. And that's search. the Google play store, the Apple, uh, Apple app store. So, well, thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you for listening to concerning him on Emmaus podcast. Ministries like Concerning Him are possible because of the generous contributions from our partners around the world. For more information about partnering with us, please visit emmaus.edu slash partner.